Hey, so welcome back to my channel. I am Daria Turner. For those who don't know, um, for those who are returning, welcome back. Um, I basically post faith-based content um, that just talks about everything. I believe that holistic healing is essential for our lives, for our growth, for our restoration. And so um, there's no limitation as to the topics that I plan to cover. Um, I just see God and try to obey whatever it is that he places on my heart to share. Um, I want to make the disclaimer now that currently my son is still up. So you may even hear some background noise um, of him watching one of his shows just to kind of entertain him a little bit right now. Um, I even have to have one of the monitors up just so I can kind of keep an eye on him. Um, that's the life of, of a, a mom, a parent, especially when you are a single parent um, who maybe does not have a lot of support you gotta do what you gotta do to still continue the course so um the purpose of this video today is just to briefly share a little bit more knowledge and understanding and um just some kind of words of wisdom and encouragement um i posted a video earlier this week bringing awareness to uh, sepsis awareness month and so i just want to briefly share a little bit of information about what sepsis is, some ways that you can prevent it, um, and then just kind of go from there, really. Um, for those who don't know, my mother passed away uh, about th almost three and a half years ago now, um, probably a little bit longer than that, but about three and a half years ago now uh, from sepsis. Uh, when she passed away, I did not know what sepsis was and so from her death it just caused me to now do more research have more awareness i want to first start off with saying i commend anyone who has had a loved one pass away from something and you've taken on the purpose and the journey to not let their death be in vain, meaning that you now bring more awareness to maybe what took place to help other people, either encourage those who have experienced it as well or those who may experience it. Um, it is not an easy task. The preparation of just looking up what sepsis is to just kind of share the actual definitions and different things like that was really hard because when you look at what the definition of sepsis I was personally there. I saw the entire process take place for days. And so up until that last breath is, is where I was. And am I honored? Absolutely. I wouldn't have it any other way. But that does not take away the trauma that does come with it. And I really had to go through um, a healing process. I realized and was convicted that I've been avoiding the purpose connected to taking on what happened and bringing more awareness and, and more purpose in it to help other people. Um, I remember around this time last year, I did a marathon and I came across someone who actually had a table that basically their purpose was sharing more knowledge about sepsis. And, you know, the lady was like, yeah, a lot of people don't know about what it is. And I was like, yeah, I didn't know at first while my mom passed away from it. So I'm definitely interested in learning more. And I had not reached out to the lady since then. Um, she had, you know, let me know that I can come with her. I can go speak at different um, functions to bring more awareness. And I had not done it because it's hard, y'all. It's no matter how much you heal from certain losses in life, it doesn't take away the hurt. It doesn't take away the memory. It doesn't take away the fact that my life is never going to be the same. And sometimes when you are bringing awareness to things like this, um, it can just really reopen some wounds or just cause you to continue to feel and remember maybe what you witnessed. So for me, when I'm looking up what the definition of sepsis is, I'm not going to go into full detail, but you can definitely look it up. I'm, I may even post like a, a little definition over here, but when you look up the process of what it is, and then I'm now reliving that, that was really hard. And now it's, do I have what it takes to go out and share with other people what this thing is, how you can prevent it so that hopefully it's not going to be a fatal experience for you or one of your family members or loved ones. And so I was reminded of what God gave me, confidently living, 
you are confidently relying on God, having confidence in God throughout this life, that whatever he calls you to, he will help you through it. And so because of that, throughout this video, throughout what's to come in the future, God is my strength and my anchor and my sustainer through it. I may cry and I want to let someone know it is okay to cry. I used to take pride in not crying. I used to feel as if though crying was a sign of weakness. But I want you to know that crying is a strength because not a lot of people will allow themselves to be vulnerable enough to release those emotions because that's a part of the healing process and the healing journey. And so I, I allow God to just let me cry. Let me cry this out as I look into what, you know, such as this to share with you. And so one, knowledge is power. And so I feel like, you know, it's okay to be ignorant from time to time because we're not going to know all things, but it's not okay to stay ignorant. And so I may not have known what sepsis was before, but through my mother's passing away, I now have an awareness of what it is and can continue on that research and understanding because ignorance is just a lack of knowledge. And so I don't want to have lack of knowledge in this area. And I hope that you will gain more information from this video. So just a brief definition of what it is for sepsis i had to you know take my notes i'm a big note taker um it's a life-threatening complication of an infection this infection can impact so many different organs within your bodies that can for some people become fatal for my mother it was fatal um but this is what i really want to touch more on is the prevention of it so this was from the um who world health org where i got this so some ways that you can Avoid and in, avoid infections or treat them early. So one practice good hygiene. So washing your hands, you know, when COVID hit, they literally had to start teaching people how to wash your hands. The amount of seconds to use that soap and water, soap and water <laughs> to uh, disinfect. Um, so washing your hands, washing, cleaning your body, cleaning your home. Um, I know everyone does not like vaccinations. That was just one of the things that they did have listed was vaccinations. Um, taking care of any type of chronic illnesses or diseases that you already have. So whether that's diabetes, lung disease, cancer, kidney disease, different things like that. Be ma Make sure you are being mindful and intentional to take care of the things that are already present. Because um, there are things that we can do in our daily habits that can even cure those things in, in spite of what Western medicine makes say. I know that you can be cured of certain things when we do take care of our bodies, eat well, and which goes into the next tip is to eat well. So um, developing and maintaining a healthy weight and a well-balanced, they say diet, I say lifestyle. I feel like this shouldn't just be like a, I have to do thing. This should be, this is my life. I live and breathe this. I, I'm intentional to exercise and to be active and to eat right, to eat better. And every day is not going to be perfect, but it's all about balance in that. Um, also being able to, um, if you get cuts and different things like that, make sure they're clean, make sure they're covered up to try to help prevent um, infections from taking place. Um, also, if you have any sign of an infection, to go to the doctor, get whatever it is that they need to do to get that infection out because you don't want that to kind of cascade into something worse. Um, and then the last thing that I noted was to avoid unclean water. Now, you can do more research to understand more preventions for this. They have some things that were listed for natural care, but these were just some tips. The, the biggest takeaway that I want to encourage you with is to take care of your body's take care of your health. When my mother passed away, I hit it up a notch with taking care of my health, getting to a, a healthy weight. But what I did not do was maintain it. When I got pregnant, I basically like, threw everything out the window. I was, you know, eating clean. I was vegan prior to pregnancy and everything. And then when the doctor all right, so that was my bad. My video cut off because I have timer set for um, all of my apps um, just to kind of help prevent with being on any of my apps for too long because Y'all know time can escape us next thing you know, we an hour in it. So <laughs> that was one of my timers going off. My bad, y'all did not turn that off before recording. But back to what I was saying was that um, basically with my pregnancy, I just, the doctor said, eat whatever the baby's craving. And then I was craving a lot of meats and all these things I really had not been eating before. I was, now I did make excuses. I was eating fast food like once or twice every day saying I was too tired to cook. And so that really led to a lot of health complications leading up to the delivery of my son. And so um, it's been a challenge uh, now postpartum. I'm, he's over a year old now, not too long for being about a year and a half or so. So 
Um, I made excuses, but now it's time to get back in the game. And I feel like with just the sepsis awareness month, it was a great time to be reminded of the importance to take care of our health. Um, I'm very transparent. My mom, she didn't take the best care of her health. And that was like one of the things that we would talk about, like just her seeing certain things that I was doing was like kind of encouraging her like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see like the results that are coming from what you're trying out. And so it was more important for me to just live a life as an example to encourage her. And I remember I used to be like, oh, my goal is to make sure you're getting off any medications that you're on kind of thing. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't, you know, fulfill that personal goal that I did have. But you know, yes, she's not here physically, but I, I saw her lifestyle. I saw her prayer life. And so uh, I'm confident that she's with the Lord. And so she's completely healed. She's not in any pain. She's not in any suffering. So I have peace and contentment with that. Um, it's not always easy, but, you know, I've learned to accept it. Um, but I just want to encourage you to really take care of your health and stop making excuses each day. Um, I'm challenging myself starting this month. It's not going to only be for the month of September, but it's going to be a continued lifestyle. There are certain um, things that God has placed on my heart to do, even to honor the life of my sister who also passed away and just health being one of the biggest things. I've just seen a lot of things with people in my family who have passed away. And I think a lot of times people don't talk about um, things that are passed down, a lot of times people will say, oh, this is hereditary. I believe that it's not necessarily um, just the blood connection that has caused this to take place within the family, but that it's the mindsets and the behaviors that have been passed down. And so when one person does things a certain way and then they continue to pass that down, that just now becomes the lineage that this is what we usually pass away from. This is usually what we're living with and living through because no one is taking that step to now say, you know what, I'm going to be intentional to make sure that I'm not working myself to death. I'm going to make sure that I'm being intentional to get rest and the proper amount of rest that my body will need daily. I'm going to make sure that I'm being intentional to cook meals and not eating out all the time and actually living an active life style, getting out in the sunlight and getting out into nature, being able to, to get those steps in and, you know, just really be able to have a peaceful, balanced life. Because when we take care of our health, that even helps us with how we can manage stress. And so when you're getting out and you're taking those deep breaths and you're just being more intentional, be mindful of what have I done today to respect the body, the vessel really that God gave me? And that was one of my convictions when I had gotten so unhealthy was that God gave me this body. And I, I dealt with so many health issues that it humbled me to be reminded of how we can take certain things for granted. We can take for granted the opportunity to have arms and legs, the ability to get outside and walk, the ability to have arms to lift weights or do push-ups or just, you know, whatever the case may be. Like we have this body and certain things to be able to exercise and have an active, healthy lifestyle. And there are even those who don't have certain limbs who are still being intentional to have an active lifestyle and be healthy. And so now it becomes what is my excuse? So what I try to do to remind myself, and it's not always easy, I don't always get it right, y'all, but what I try to do is remember God gave me this body. If every day I say I want to honor God with my life, being healthy, eating better, budgeting better, like making more intentional, wise decisions, not just being impulsive and just doing things out of feelings, but actually operating out of faith to seek God for how am I supposed to handle the situation? How am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to organize this? That when I can seek him in that and choosing my faith over my feelings, when I don't feel like working out, when I don't feel like cooking, when I don't feel like cleaning, when I don't feel like, you know, whatever, whatever it is that he's needing of me in that moment, when I don't feel like it, remembering that he gave me this opportunity. So why not use it? Because the thing is, we take advantage of tomorrow. And we just act like tomorrow is promised and it's not. And so because tomorrow is not promised, yes, we can plan for it just in case, but it's not promised. So I want to make sure that every day I'm doing something that when I leave, I'm leaving a legacy behind. The legacy that I want to leave behind is the importance of knowledge, the importance of 
of researching things and knowing things for yourself. It's it's okay to, you know, connect with people and, you know, talk about the word of God. But if, if a preacher is, is sharing a scripture, don't just take it at face value. Make sure you go read the word for yourself to gain understanding from what it truly says. Because sometimes people can alter things. And so that's why you do want to make sure that you're doing your own reading and your own research that people can't do this and live this life for you. You have to be active in this process. And so I know this is a video on sepsis awareness, but the biggest takeaway on prevention was health, living an active, healthy lifestyle. That was one of the things that I wanted my mother to do. That was one of the things that I started doing after she passed away. That looked like cutting out toxic people and relationships and situations that I was a part of and in for my own peace and healing. Sometimes um, loving people from a distance, um, no longer settling for not knowing how to set certain boundaries and standards, um, understanding that I had to break free from the identity that people tried to put on me instead of realizing who God actually created me to be. And so, and I'm still on the journey. And But the, the videos that are coming up are going to talk about that, our identity um, in Christ. And so I say all that just to say, with sepsis awareness, it was a quick reminder of how important it is to take care of our health. Our health is our wealth. A lot of times people are looking at money and all that stuff, but no, being able to breathe without a machine when I've seen someone that had to do that, being able to use both arms when I saw my mother no longer have one, that, that in itself is a quick reminder of being grateful for everything that I still currently have because we don't know what tomorrow may bring. And one thing about salvation is that I, I read it earlier this week that says salvation doesn't change what we go through. It just changes how we respond to it. And so even though I may go through so many traumatic situations, what is my response? Trusting in God. If you allowed me to go through this situation, if you allowed it or created it, it's for a purpose. It's going to build my endurance. It's going to build my character. It's going to increase my faith in you. And so that's going to be my response every time. That in sickness and in health, I'm going to be committed to the call. So yes, this may be hard. Yes, I may cry. Yes, this may still hurt me. I may still you know, have those human emotions of how can I help someone prevent their family or, you know, friend from having this as a fatal, you know, result when that wasn't the case for my mother, it was fatal for her. And that's a human response of, I wish she was still here. But the reality is she's not. And that I'm not going to let her death be in vain. That I am going to use this to say, I hope that I can help someone take their health more seriously. I hope that I can help someone that maybe they're going through or they have a family member or a friend who has gone through or is going through sepsis. There are ways to prevent it, catch it early. Do not avoid the doctor. Do not avoid any kind of signs that you may have. Um, I may even kind of post like an image of different symptoms and signs of it. I don't want any hypochondriacs to see this and then kind of think that now that they have it, because it may not be for you. I'm just saying, I just, I want to bring awareness. So my goal is to bring the resource, bring the information, encourage you to do more research just so you can have knowledge of it and continue to share it on with somebody else, because this video may be for somebody who needed this. So... If you don't take anything else from this video, just take care of your health because your health is your wealth. And until next time, peace and purpose. I hope you all have a great day.